Welcome. I'm Eric Myers from Myers Mushrooms. This video is about the commercial kitchen that I'm building here at my mushroom farm. I'm going to go over some of the things that I have to, I've had to go through uh, to get it started, and I'll talk a little bit about my plans. So right now, COVID's going on. We're heading into winter. Things are slowing down a little bit. Even without COVID, things would really be slow around January. Typically, after the holidays, sales kind of drop off. The only thing is mushroom growing in the winter is great and my production won't drop off. So being able to dehydrate mushrooms gives me that flexibility of product to where I don't have to sell everything that I grow right away. It lets me shelf some items. So I'm gonna be making two products primarily is dehydrated mushrooms and mushroom jerky, which is basically boiled mushrooms, marinated, and then dehydrated. I do have another video about that. Uh, I'll put it, uh, a link in the description below where you guys can check out that video. So. One thing in Kansas is I actually need to have an inspected kitchen. Some places don't need, some states do not require an inspected kitchen. They will say that it's a cottage good, that you can just label it as made in a home kitchen, you know, not subject to USDA, whatever. The only, the only uh, kicker to that is that you can only sell person to person. So at the farmer's market, or if somebody comes and buys it from you, you can't like ship it out wholesale and have it be on store shelves. Whereas having an inspected kitchen allows you to do that. I can sell this to the supermarket, sell it to all different organic markets or whatever and, and have them sell it retail. Um, so one of the first steps that I did was contact KDA, the Department of Agriculture. So contact your state's D Department of Agriculture, look at the guidelines. I went on their website and there was an application form I had to fill out included with that was a floor plan so i hopped online and found a, a, a free floor plan sketcher application drew the floor plan of the entire operation and showed this how i wanted the sink and our dishwasher so that the main thing that they're looking for is washable surfaces they're looking for frp or stainless steel or just anything that's not porous and easy to wash for your walls um, around where you're doing food preparation so i put frp around the sink and frp back there they don't want porous, uh, like it was plywood. Um, they want to see a triple wash sink for washing and sanitizing your, your dishes and any kind of instruments. And then they also want to make sure that all of your vessels will fit inside of it. So like that, for instance, has to fit inside of there so it can be fully submerged for sanitizing. Now this is what KDA requires. I'm not sure if that's up across the board nationwide. Um, I'm going to put a dishwasher out here but it's a residential dishwasher, so they're saying that I have to either run indicator tabs or a sanitizer solution in it because it doesn't get up to temperatures high enough for sanitizing. But either way, it'll be super handy to have a dishwasher out here for washing things, not just for the kitchen, but for the labs as well, like the agar uh, flasks we use and different tools. Um, so for the planning right now, uh, once we submit, we already submitted the layout, the layout's gonna be triple wash sink, hand wash sink, a utility sink around there. We also had to add a bathroom. That is a requirement that there is a bathroom in the facility. Right now there's no bathroom out here. There was no sewer out here. We were just draining off the, the greenhouse or the mushroom farm is just draining off into the, the, the dirt pretty much because it's just water. And then everything else we're doing by buckets with hands, by hand. So we have a sewer now that's being plumbed in. I'm having, I just, made a hole here for the sewer to come up into the house, into the building and drain off of here. Uh, and then we're also gonna tie in the bathroom over here. It's gonna be a full bathroom so we can shower for the lab uh, before we head in there, especially for the spawn lab. That'll be super, super handy to have on site. So um, yeah, we're gonna have the new, the new expansion. So I didn't, I didn't mention that it's gonna be actually a whole new building out there. It's gonna be a 15 by 28. I mentioned in the last quick video that I made 15 by 28 steel building. That will be the expansion because now this was the classroom, now it's the kitchen. So that's gonna cause the classroom to move to in there. Um, also, we need a little bit more warehouse space. So that's gonna solve two birds with one stone because we can still kind of use this for warehouse space when we're shipping out big truckloads of flow hoods or equipment. Um, and then we'll also have that in the back as well. So, uh, the, right now, the plan is we have these, these burners over here. I got these either cook right burners. They are 80,000 BTU double burners. So it's 160,000 BTUs per uh, unit. And uh, I got them locally. They're about a little bit less than $600. And 
Then we're doing a 20 gallon uh, Bayou Classic. I'll put the link for this below. Bayou Classic pot with the strainer, and that's super handy because when you fill it up with mushrooms and boil them, and then you want to separate all the mushrooms, well, now you just lift it out. Um, I think we might need an overhead crane because it gets really heavy. So a little pulley system or something might be in the future, uh, but for now we're just doing it manually. I'm also going to integrate a uh, from Brew Hardware. I got some tri clamps, and, uh, not tri clamps, but uh, cam locks, and I'm going to put a cam lock fitting on here so we can drain it out into the sink, so you don't have to pick up 20 gallons of water manually. You can just drain it into the sink, wash it in place, drain it in place, all that. So. That's the plan. Right now we have a small dehydrator. As you can see, there's definitely room for more. So this one got me going. It's, a, it's enough for fitting about 50 pounds, 60 pounds of jerky per run. Uh, and that's wet mushrooms I'm talking. So 60 pounds wet mushrooms in, boil it, marinate it. It'll all fit in there. Um, you do have to rotate it a bit. Uh, I don't really love that dehydrator, but it works. It is a Weston from Re uh, Webstrong store. And uh, I do want to make a bigger one. So I have a double door fridge that TR Davis gave me from Earth Angel Mushrooms. If you haven't checked out his videos, check him out, subscribe to him as well. So I have a double door glass front fridge that is no longer operational. Yeah, the coils blew up on them. So uh, I'm going to be taking that hopefully in the future and converting that into a dehydrator. So I'll just basically switch the coils out, the cooling coils out for electric heating coils hopefully do some kind of HRV uh, heating system so where it's sucking in fresh air from outside, heating it up using the exhaust going out. Uh, so that's, that's in the future plans, but right now I'm just trying to get everything going and inspected. So um, that's the plan. The other thing that we'll be doing is just dehydrating mushrooms, uh, making powders, making like blends, like salt blends or spice blends or seasonings. Like stuff. I saw somebody, I forget who it was, they put a, a, uh, like a bouillon cube with some herbs and the freaking and the dried mushrooms and they sell it in a little bag so that's one idea the salts is great like take some shiitake grind it up to a powder add it to some like himalayan pink salt whatever put it in a little bottle sell it for five ten dollars so uh just other ideas to kind of get value added from dried product that would otherwise be kind of an excess and a waste because what your your production is more steady than your than your demand more often than not um, especially if you have a large facility like I do and my demand is just starting off. I haven't really even gotten into the market yet. We just started up about six months ago. So we're still working our way into the market here. So this should give us a lot of flexibility with our product. It should avoid us from throwing away like old product that's been sitting in the fridge for too long. We would just dehydrate it or jerky it or, or anything like that. So yeah, um, I'm gonna try to document this as much as I can. I'm kind of on a time crunch to get this all done, but I will try to document how the bill goes. And uh, yeah, so stay tuned. And then once we're done, the plan is I'll shoot some videos utilizing the kitchen, showing you guys the processes that I've come up with uh, to try to speed it up. So we're gonna get some more equipment in here. And I think I got some ideas on how to make really quick mushroom jerky uh, with minimal labor. So yeah, all right, take it easy. Hope you like this video. Check out Myers Mushrooms for all your supplies and equipment needs. And uh, take it easy, have a good one. Keep on mushrooming.